Yo, we're back. And today, after what we talked about last week, which was buying used and new cars, we're gonna go into a bit more detail about what to look for when you buy your first car, or potentially this will be good for the people who generally just wanna buy another car, especially a used car. First thing first, like, where'd you look? Where'd you look to buy a car? You've got things like Auto Trader, eBay, garages in your local area, Facebook Marketplace, things like that. Loads of places where you can buy a car. I can remember when I bought my first car, I bought it off my uncle, okay? Now that was a Fiat Uno. You're probably thinking, what the hell is that? A Fiat Uno, what a beast that was. Check this out. I was rolling in style, nah. But however, it doesn't matter. For that first year, it got me around. Luckily enough, it didn't break down and it got me from A to B. So of course, once you find a car you like, the best thing to do is call up the person who's selling it or the dealership, whoever's selling the car, and um, organize to view it and potentially test drive the course. So definitely, obviously, you should give it a visual check and I'm gonna show you now the basic things you should look for when you buy this car. Let's pull over here. Ah, yeah, so the first thing we need to do is obviously give a visual check of the car. I'm gonna come with my jacket on, because it's bloody freezing. Right, so ideally the first thing you wanna do is have a good look all the way around the car. Scratch, dents, big balls of rust. Of course, if the car has big dents in it, massive scratches, the car might have been in a crash before. So this could obviously lead to other problems which you might not be able to see visually. When it comes to rust, things like that, you wanna be looking in the arches. Mainly rust will be coming here. It still can come around in other parts of the car, but that's irrelevant. But mainly, the older the car, depending on if it's rusty or not, you're looking under here because the whole panel could fall apart eventually, all right? When you check your tires, please make sure there are no cuts and bulges around the outside. You might remember that from some of the show me and tell me questions what we've done before. Make sure the minimum tread depth is at least 1.6 millimeters across the central three quarters and all the way around. Take a look at the brakes as well for any major damage you might be able to see. Some cars come with disc brakes. You can see with mine, it comes with drum brakes, okay? But you can't really see any damage from the outside as such because it's mostly inside. Unless you're a mechanic, you're not gonna know. But generally, your common sense, if you can use that, you will notice if there's something obviously wrong. With the alloy wheels, um, you'll notice sometimes there'll be scuff around the edges if your previous owners hit the things like that. But in general, you've got to think again, how old is the car? How well has it been looked after? You should be able to tell most of that by just generally looking at the car. Once you've had a good visual check of the car, let's make our way around to the front, check all the lights, front and back, check your headlights, no cracks, things like that. Other ways you can definitely tell if the car's been in an accident, check the panels. You can sometimes tell in the paintwork, totally different color of paint. Obviously, I don't think we're gonna get away with that with my car, are we? Eh, uh, no, I disguise it quite well. And then you wanna take a look round the car, but obviously before you do that, get in, turn all the lights on, and if you need someone to help you, get them to walk round while you check all the lights. And I'm sure, as you know, one of the major parts of driving is we should be able to see out of the main windscreen. Now you're looking for any things like cracks, chips. Remember, chips can lead to cracks. Last thing on the exterior is check under the bonnet. I know this is a boot, all right? I'm just gonna get my little flannel out of here. So every car has its own little catch. Mine is on the passenger seat. Ask the person who's selling the car where the catch is. There's a few things you want to look for when you're looking under the bonnet of the car and you're looking at the engine. One thing you want to do, obviously when you did go to look at the car, you would have checked what the engine size was and you would have checked the insurance just to make sure you could actually afford the car. Basic things you're looking for underneath the engine is definitely the oil, okay? So when you check the engine oil level, make sure it's cold like we've talked about before. When you check the engine oil level, make sure it's at a good level. And you can see now that it is in between the minimum and the maximum mark. It's dead in the middle. My engine oil is quite black, okay? Now, my car does get driven quite a lot. If it's been regularly serviced or you never know if it's just been serviced, you might see the oil is actually a little bit clearer than black. What you're also looking for is where we fill the oil under the cap. Mine's actually... <laughs> Mine's actually... <laughs> Go away, cut it out. I'm actually serious, I can't get it off. <laughs> I'm gonna pull the engine out in a minute. No, like honestly, this is like the most awkward cap in the world. I actually can't. When you look at the engine, take a look for the oil filler cap, okay? Undo that, have a look underneath and make sure that you see no frothiness. After checking the engine oil level, make sure you check underneath the oil filler cap, okay? Now what you're looking for is when you lift it up to make sure there's no frothiness in there. If it is, that potentially means that the head gasket could be going. Now you don't want that to happen. Check all the levels under the car, things like your coolant, your windscreen wash, 
and your brake fluid. Make sure they're all in between the minimum and maximum marks. Except for your windscreen wash, which can be all the way to the top. You've got your battery here, just make sure there's no corrodiness around the terminals, things like that. One of the major things I can tell you about the engine is make sure we have no leaks on the car. So look underneath where the car's parked and definitely look for loads of oil maybe being spilled all over the engine. If there is, it's not a very good sign. If you see a nice clean engine like mine, it might be just good. So once you've done that, that should be all the basics done and in for the bonnet. Now, I'm not no mechanic and I don't expect you to be, but if you do know somebody who's a mechanic or someone who knows a lot more about cars, maybe you want to take them with you as well. But like I said, there's only a certain amount of things you can see with a car visually. At the end of the day, all cars break down, all cars go wrong. I've had my fair share of cars going wrong on me. It's just what's happened. Of course, there's things that you can't actually see. Some cars come with a spare tire, which would be in the boot, okay, just underneath the carpet. Now, some cars nowadays don't actually come with a spare wheel. There's something you might want to check before you buy the car. If it doesn't come with a spare wheel, it should come with a puncture repair kit, which what happens is when the car breaks down, potentially you've got a flat tire, you can pump up with this foam, makes it really hard, and it means you can drive to the nearest place to make it safe. Once you've had a good look around the outside, let's check the inside. Now, of course, you want to just look for the basics. We're talking basics today. Check all the switches, check all the seats, any cracks, nasty little bumps you got in the car, but there shouldn't be too much. Like once again, it depends on how old the car is. Think about how much you're gonna be paying for this car. Have you got a good deal already? Um, if you've got a good deal already, you might be thinking, right, they've put the price down because the interior is slightly damaged, but this could happen. So when you get in the car, of course, check all the controls, make sure none of the switches are heavily damaged, things like that. Well, the horn works, of course. Make sure it's really comfortable. Now, obviously you might have liked the car just by looking at it, but the thing is when you sit in the car, do you still like it? Have you got enough leg room? You know, is there enough room in the back? Can you get the buggy in the back? <laughs> Make sure, of course, all the windows can go up and down. Sometimes you've got automatic windows. Sometimes we've still got the old manual ones. And you've got the seats, you know, make sure they're nice and comfy. Make sure they move correctly, of course. And especially the main thing is the seatbelt. Make sure you get one of them. Because if not, it's not going to pass the MOT. When you crash, you're going to get one of them. So it don't matter. Talking about MOTs, one thing I didn't mention, is definitely something you must do, is before you even go look at the car, make sure the car does actually have MOT. If it doesn't, is it in the deal? The person who you're buying it off might be asking you to MOT the car before you buy it. There's something you definitely want to avoid. With regards to MOT, remember that every car above three years old must have an MOT. You can go online, check the MOT history to see if the mileage is genuine as well. Make sure you check the mileage on the car because it might have either been recorded back. Some people are sneaky. Got to be careful of people like that. When you're checking the mileage, obviously you want to be thinking about the service you know the higher the mileage the car has the more prone it could be to breaking down the thing is did you know the mileage when you first turned up there's something you definitely want to look at with mileage on the car you could ask the dealership you say you know are you going to service the car has the car been serviced if it hasn't got any history ask them about it the car will have or should have a car manual with it so check the book to see if it's actually been regularly serviced if it hasn't ask your dealership or ask the person who is selling the car they should be able to tell you whether it's been serviced or it hasn't. This is something you also want to go into now and think about the price. Now, this is where you can bargain them now. So if you haven't serviced the car, hasn't got no MOT, let's bring that price down a little bit. But then again, if it has been serviced, it has got MOT, maybe they're asking for a reasonable price. To get a good idea about how your car is priced, the one you want to buy, obviously check online, see what they're going for, and they will tell you what your rough price should be. When you're checking inside the car, one of the biggest things is all your controls, things like windows, lights, things like that. Make sure you check them all, things like windscreen, washers, wipers, horn, We've got lights, make sure your air conditioning works, don't want to be getting too hot in the summer, and all your fans as well. Some cars come with a lot of extra features, as I'm sure you know, things like your radio, and things like Bluetooth, you know, you want to check, make sure your phone actually connects to the car. There's so many things you need to go through, you make sure you go through every little detail on the car to make sure you're getting what you're paying for. Overall, when you're checking a car, I think the main thing is you're trying to find things that they're trying to hide. You know, that whether that be a dealership or a person that's selling it to you, it could be a friend or you just never know. So things like bad smells in the car, you know, spilt milk, or if they've been smoking, look at the top of the headliner inside the car. If you're gonna have to get rid of bad smells, that could cost quite a lot of money and get a full valet inside the car things like that pretty much when all that's done quite simple i know you, i could go into so much detail vital vital thing we must do let's give the car a test drive so let's drive this bad boy <laughs> stop go away so when you're test driving the car, the main thing you're looking for, definitely the most important thing, is you're listening for sounds. Things like lasting knocks. It'll... Usually when you hear knocks on the car, it could be something to do with your wheels, your suspension, any type of mount that's in the car or the actual main engine mount. Sometimes when you're going over a speed bump, which I'm going to go over right now, um, you'll hear the knocking. So, session across, that as you go over. No nasty bumps, no nasty knocks, no noises, all is good. 
when you're checking your brakes, make sure they don't feel slack or spongy. Make sure the pedal doesn't go all the way down to the floor because that could mean that definitely there's either a leak in the brake fluid or the brakes are completely worn out. With the steering, the steering should feel nice and light. If the steering wheel feels heavy, then it could be something wrong with the power assist steering. Handbrake, handbrake when you put it on, listen for the clicks. But you're looking for about three or four clicks. If you get more and it comes all the way to the top, it means it could be overstretched. Pulling away, things like that. The clutch pedal, when you're pushing it down, changing gear. No knocks, again, should go down quite freely. And sometimes clutch can have quite a big old spring on them as well so sometimes it might be firmer than other cars your gear stick when you're changing gears you want to be looking for nice smooth movements with the gear stick i mean sometimes with older cars they'll be a little more a little bit more stickier but generally there should be no hard movements in the car steering wheel gear stick handbrake foot pedal accelerator all the pedals should move as they should move which is quite freely shouldn't be hard to do not forgetting your vehicle documents okay so don't forget your vehicle document. When you check your vehicle document, you look at things like the address, is the address the same? The registration plate, is it the same? You're looking for any type of red flags where you think, hmm, this doesn't look right. If it doesn't look right, ask the person who's selling the car or the dealership and say, well, what, why is this, you know, why is it parked here? Who, you know, who are you selling someone else? You know, if something starts to, to stutter or like I do, or something sounds weird, maybe you want to think this isn't the car for me. If it is your first car, then you might not know what feels right. On your lessons, I'm sure your car that you were driving would have been absolutely fine. The instructor, the instructor, the instructor would have made sure of that. The thing is, if you're going to be driving the car, you ideally want to be test driving the car. So you could have a go at it first and then have someone else test drive the car, like a parent or someone like that. And they might be able to find something out that you didn't know about. They might think, no, this doesn't feel right. And you might not have known. But yes, those documents, I think it's called the V5C, the registration document, which makes you responsible for tax in the vehicle. Make sure the address is the same. Make sure the registration number is the same another thing about the vehicle documents you know if the car says it has a MOT ask the dealer or the person who's selling the car can I see the MOT certificate once again you can go online and check just to make sure that the car does have MOT and of course you want to give that radio a good go really it's okay I'm good Let's go. nah, don't do that. but the radio works of course when you go on these websites for example auto trader you'll have a vehicle description now, you want to check all those little added extras that the car has. Just make sure they're all working. Things like sat-nav, Bluetooth. Sometimes when you're driving down a straight piece of road with the steering, you want to maybe not let it go, but it should ideally drive straight. If you slightly let go of the wheel once and it, it pulls to the right or the left, that might mean that the tracking's out or there might be something seriously wrong with one of the arms on the suspension. Could be a thing. Okay, and that is pretty much it. Ah, so gone through most of the basics there are so many things you could go into detail if you're feeling like you want to give the car a really good go over then take somebody who really knows about cars so i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching again if you have anything you want to ask don't forget to comment below so if you could please like the video subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions pop them in the comments below something quite interesting coming up i'm going to be doing some car reviews for you guys so if you've got any cars you'd like me to review pop them in the comments below and i'll get it sorted